without delaying, I'll start with my topic as we are already late for the sessions. So I will be talking about the role of social media and management of inside management of GDM. And the stage is set for me because my colleagues and my earlier uh, presentation has been done. And uh, to, uh, I, I would like to ask the question from the audience, like, how many of you have observed when we go out for a dinner and uh, when the family is sitting together with the father is busy with the phone, mother is busy with another phone and kids. So no comments while, while they are going for the dinner, they are busy with the phone. So I'm sure everybody would uh, agree to this statement of mine. Yes. Yeah. So we are always busy and it, that is irrespective of anything. Just for the casually sitting, they are always with the phone. So at times when we have to tell our patients for a sleep hygiene, keep away your phone. But this phone also helps for us to manage in cases of GDM. So this has been going on uh, talk and uh, presentation since yesterday. We are seeing. Now I will talk how social media helps. So global burden of diabetes, we, everybody would agree. Self-management is the key in treatment of diabetes and how social media helps in diabetes care management and the peer support it gives to our patients. So this is uh, globally uh, social media users. So I'll focus here on India. So we have 16.1% uh, in Southern um, Asia and India is the second number and uh, in the population who are using social media, first one is China and second is ours. And what are the current trends in the usage of social media platforms? So you coming to the total population, we have 1.42 million urbanization, that is 36.1% who are using uh, this uh, trends. Cellular mobile connections have been used by 1.1 billion uh, page, uh, uh, users. Internet users are 692 million and the active social media users are 467 million was of the population of 32.8. And the internet access in perspective, we have access to electricity, drinking water, and the basic sanitization. So that's huge amount and it's been increasing and 99% of electricity, where the internet users are 48.7. So that's almost a 50% of the total population of India. The internet users over time have been increasing from, if you see just January 2013 to so far January 23, is ongoing and we have 692 million people who have been using internet over time. And the daily time they spend with media, especially I would mention here, the time spent using social media is two hours, 50 minutes. And the screening time is so much that at times, you know, we have to tell our kids as well, stop. No, this is a time where you need to take a break, go out and play because it's a leading cause uh, for the pediatric obesity as well. Daily time spent using the internet is uh, 6 hours 23 uh, minutes for using internet across all devices. Time is spent using the internet on mobile phone is 3 hours 55 minutes and the the time is spent using the internet on computers and tablets are uh, 2 hours and 28 minutes, whereas mobile share of total daily internet time is 61.4%. So we are increasing as the Digi Yatra is like, if I'm sure if anybody is using, they would agree to it. Digitalization and Digi Yatra is, uh, you know, make, made our life so uh, relaxing and, you know, it's all the accessibility is very easy. And the main reasons for using this social media is keeping in touch with friends and family. So like COVID has taught us a lot and it's been teaching us till now. We have come up to telemedicine, teleconsultation and everything. And imagine uh, this is probably the irony that we won't go and meet our parents in the next room, but we have a very good connection in our social media platform with our friends and family. So probably. <laughs> This is probably a flaw in a use of internet. And the most used social media platforms are WhatsApp. So I, I'm sure everybody would agree that is 76.8% and in Instagram users are 74.7. We keep busy our reel. I'm Instagrammer too and I keep making my reels and just to create more awareness uh, in terms of diabetes and endocrine disorders. 
And the pay pay to social media platforms are Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, and Telegram is 4.3 percent. We are coming to the uh, making networking and connections. We have 1.7 percent on LinkedIn. So understanding the digital landscape of social media, so digital health platform. Dr. Amit spoke uh, very well about it. How this is going to help in terms of uh, diabetes management, um, in terms of uh, peer group support, medication adherence, and dietary management. And social media roles in facilitating peer to peer communication. We have lots of communities who have come across who keep providing uh, new platforms and peer group support. It's very important in playing a major role in cases of GDM. Bridging communication gaps with social media. So once the patient, as we as a clinician, our, uh, at times are very busy, so we miss some important points they can ask in the community groups. We have made a WhatsApp group for our patients' uh, support. They help uh, try to clarify the minor, minor issues in terms of any diet, like whether they can consume nuts or fruits or whatsoever. So it can be done very well uh, on the social media. And the health uh, providers use, uh, it's like uh, answer patient questions, monitor patient uh, discussion for insight into their concern and needs. The social media platform personalized patient education program is online community tailoring advice to the real world challenges that patients face in managing diabetes. So this, this small intervention education really helps and works. What are the gaps? As I said, there might be some question with patient would, my patient would come and write and they would ask everything one by one. So maybe the I would focus more on the exercise or the walk and the patient would uh, you know, after GDM, what next? So that point, if suppose it misses, they can have the uh, help of social media and ask their questions accordingly to the different uh, groups. What are the effectiveness of social media interventions? So improvement in glycemic control. As we all know, the in the cases of GDM, the fasting and the postprandial needs to be in the norm in a very tight control. And today I attended a session of Dr. Shishaya and he said, if you are able to, uh, any patient who would come and just monitor their blood sugar and keep it at the 10th week, if it's uh, uh, less than 110, that's great. If it increases more than 110, you need to intervene at that level. So diet glycemic control is the key of the management in, uh, in the patients of GDN and social media does help. So we need to create more awareness how uh, this is going to help in their, like the treatment starts from the womb. So this will help uh, for a better you know, clinic uh, outcome uh, in terms of fetal alcohol. And the DSME is uh, diabetes self management education delivered through social media channels. And it is important for the particularly beneficial, for the accessibility, ability, flexibility. It provides all these parameters for the patient to connect at the same time to uh, to their peers as well. Social media based patient education programs as we also run a program for uh, and we conducted on every uh, Sunday, every post Sunday at times when it was not possible during the COVID time, we used uh, social media platforms just to uh, create more awareness so that nobody should be refrained from us and uh, Teleconsultation, as you all are aware, we keep doing. And there's another flaw of social media as well. You keep posting the reel, and they would start from the consultation on WhatsApp itself. So that again becomes a problem because they might come with the complications of gastritis. It could be, uh, you know, MI or something else. So that cannot be handled over just a WhatsApp consultation. So uh, the benefits are comprehensive content delivery, enhanced learning experience, customization and relevance regular interaction and support, measurable impact on management. And we have been doing regular meetings as Dr. Amit said, and he's a pro in doing all this. And we have a very series in hypoglycemia and so on. When we, we have been, I'm lucky to be a part of this organization. Online diabetes communities, they are very good in providing support, role, role in self-management, diverse platform, improvement in self-care and challenges in digital communities. And this is the video of this. More engagements via online communities. So I'm sure everybody would agree we have the various platforms. We talk about Instagram, Zoom, or uh, you know Microsoft, 
So there are, um, they provide psycho psychosocial support and reduce isolation because uh, COVID, uh, this uh, diabetes itself causes so much of depression and we keep telling our patients to keep monitoring, keep monitoring, but just imagine when it comes to us, even just a one break will cause so much uh, chaos in our family, into ourselves as well. So that leads to depression. So once they have a few peer support who's already going through or gone through this state, they help uh, support, providing the good support to, to the patients. Influencing healthcare practice in terms of insight gain from these communities can help influence healthcare practice and policies. The various diabetes apps on social media, uh, so popularity of diabetes apps, there are apps, few apps are also available in terms of uh, calorie counting, carb counting, self-care behavior, reaching a wider audience. And this, uh, there, there was a study published in PubMed and which emphasizes on popular diabetes apps and impact of diabetes app use of self-care behavior. It was a survey among the digital community of the person with diabetes on social media. What is the effective use of social media for target audience in diabetes care? So the time is spent using social media, there are various apps, as you all know. So YouTube patients uh, spend around so 29 hours, 12 minutes per user per month. And Facebook, 21 hours, 24 minutes. WhatsApp is uh, most widely used, 17 hours, 36 minutes. Instagram, 14 hours. True College, 7 hours, 36 minutes. So the YouTube, if all of us could just post a small video just to create awareness regarding their diet or their exercise schedule or uh, their blood sugar monitoring, that would help us to achieve a good glycine control throughout their pregnancy for a better fetal outcome and the better weight management because the as I said, the, the care starts from the womb and so it is very important if the entire process has been taken care and monitored well. Uh, because um, uh, to my knowledge, I have seen I've seen lots of pediatric obesity cases. Pediatric obesity, even uh, the child would come, 14 year or 12 year will come with a type 2 diabetes. So the only thing can be done very well managed is to start from the beginning so that you can prevent them from going into the uh, complications of diabetes as well. So this was another paper published on PubMed, Social Media and Diabetes. Can Facebook and Skype improve glucose control in the patient with type 1 diabetes on their insulin pump? It was a one-year experience, and they could observe that, yes, it does help in the patients on type 1 diabetes on, who are on from therapy. WhatsApp have their personalized communities. Now, uh, there's another feature that has launched on the WhatsApp. They have a variety of communities. They have a variety of channels. Whichever channel you fit is appropriate for you or for your patient, you can just advise them and they can simply log in and uh, uh, get the support. Instagram is visually engaging educational content. And uh, being Instagrammer, I keep posting small, small videos with lots of education. So smaller the video, more the views, better the, it would be a very crisp. And it just gives a direct message to the audience. YouTube education videos and tutorials. YouTube will very wider. Uh, platform, social media platform. So just to summarize, it is there, there are diverse platforms for varied needs and we need to choose accordingly as for the patient need and tell them this would be a better community. Just join that. Enhancing patient uh, engagement in terms of uh, their uh, personal life care, peer support and accessible education, bridging healthcare communication gaps between the doctor, healthcare providers, and the patient. Role in self-management, which is very important in eventually with GDM. Potential challenges, while social media offers immense potential in diabetes care, addressing challenges like misformation and maintaining patient privacy is crucial. Thank you for patient hearing.